In today's society, the rapid development of digital technology alongside the widespread use of social media has led people to indulge in fantasies propagated online or in videos portraying unrealistic scenarios. We often find ourselves ensnared in the whirlwind of unrealistic expectations, causing joy and happiness to become fragile. Even the closest relationships can become sources of deep worry and disappointment. At such times, you may find yourself standing on the threshold of a significant event, perhaps a painful breakup where feelings gradually fade or an unforeseen isolation stemming from toxic colleagues disrupting your personal life. Or perhaps you're confronted with irreconcilable conflicts within the family where differences in viewpoints and awareness persist. In moments like these, have you ever wondered if there's a way to unlock the door to inner peace? The answer lies not in distant places, but in the Stoic philosophy of self-control, where the concept of detachment shines like a beacon in the dark night, guiding us towards tranquility. Detachment is not advice for coldness. Rather, it's a meaningful journey where we live each moment beautifully without being bound by circumstances. Delving into the bonds and losses of human existence, we explore the principles of Stoicism. In today's video, we invite you to discover the power of detachment through seven steps to separate yourself from circumstances. Transform it into a tool to overcome barriers in relationships, work, and confront the challenges of life. We encourage you to watch the entire video because each of us has different circumstances and perhaps the subsequent steps will truly resonate with you. So don't miss out on anything and at the end of the video, please comment to let us know which step resonated most with you. And now, let's begin. Step one, embracing tranquility. In life, there are times when we need to temporarily step away from a person or situation to regain clarity, perspective, and most importantly, not to create a void or distance. Picture this, you're amidst a lively music performance with booming music, enthusiastic cheers, and in the midst of it all, you're trying to catch a friend's whisper. Quite challenging, isn't it? That's the scenario we often encounter when we get too close to someone or something. Our emotions, much like the noise of that music performance, obscure clarity and focus. Stepping away is akin to stepping out of that performance into a tranquil space where we can think and feel more deeply. As Seneca once said, as often as you sojourn, return to yourself. This isn't merely about physical distance, it's also about mental and spiritual space. When emotions cloud our vision, stepping away allows us to observe them more objectively, akin to watching clouds drift across the sky, understanding they're just a small part of this vast world. This detachment isn't about being cold. It's about viewing the situation with objectivity and insight. It's an opportunity to see beyond to see the whole chessboard, not just the piece in our hand. To accomplish this, there's no need for a countryside villa like the ancient Stoics. Simply turning off your phone, taking a stroll in the park, or merely sitting quietly in a corner suffices. The goal is to find a tranquil space where your thoughts aren't disturbed by the hustle and bustle of life. It's in these serene moments that we find the strength to make decisions not driven by immediate emotions, but by reasoned thought and profound wisdom within. This step back is your strong move, your space to breathe and see beyond, transcending the fog of the present. Step two, the rationality of self-distancing. Step two of the journey is to contemplate the rationality of maintaining distance. This choice isn't a hurried decision, but a profound process reflecting self-reflection and moral virtue, which Stoicism advocates. Imagine your life as a long voyage, and along this journey, you encounter forks in the road, and the people around you are like companions or guides. 
Some help you advance or accompany you on your path, while others may lead you astray, temptations in life, or simply represent wrong turns. Like a guide on your own path, you must decide which companions are trustworthy to follow, which guidance to heed, and which forks, temptations to avoid stepping into. This decision isn't merely about avoidance. It's a deliberate action towards preserving oneself and maintaining morale integrity. Consider the example of Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher who transformed from a state of slavery to profound wisdom. He often emphasized the significance of selecting relationships aligned with our inner freedom. His life teaches us a valuable lesson. Not everyone we meet brings light. Some may cast shadows that dim our own brightness. So, contemplate your relationships as mirrors. What do they reflect? Joy, growth and understanding, or doubt, discomfort and disappointment. Choosing to maintain distance isn't a solitary act, but an intentional decision regarding self-preservation and ethics. Stoicism isn't about cold, detached logic. It's about warm, insightful wisdom. It prompts us to ponder, does this person enhance my life like a harmonious melody or disrupt it like a discordant note? Remember the words of Epictetus. We are not disturbed by what happens to us, but by our thoughts about what happens. This underscores that it's not just about the person, but also about how you perceive their impact on your life. Ultimately, the decision to maintain distance is about crafting a life story you're proud to narrate. It's about staying true to yourself, your values, and your journey. Stoicism teaches us to embrace relationships that enrich our narrative and gently let go of those that don't. It's about creating a life where every person and experience is a thoughtful addition to the resume of your existence. Step 3. Seek a companion. In the journey of life, when each piece of existence resembles a fragment of a grand mosaic, there are moments where we find ourselves struggling alone to rearrange them. It is at this juncture that we must open our hearts. While Stoic philosophy celebrates inner strength, it does not dismiss the value of connection. Conversing with someone you trust is akin to finding a stable anchor amidst turbulent seas. This isn't to evade our own difficulties, but to attain greater clarity and perspective. Consider this as having a companion in the voyage of life, someone who assists in charting the map while your compass seems adrift. Seneca, with his profound insight into human nature, recognized the value of shared wisdom. He likened a friend to a mirror, reflecting not only our image, but also the deepest truths within us. This reflection isn't merely about seeing oneself clearly, it's about understanding one's path, when you open up to someone, you're not just sharing words. You're inviting them into your inner world, offering a glimpse of your thoughts and emotions. This sharing creates a space of mutual understanding and support where knowledge is exchanged, not just empathy. Choose a companion wisely, someone who embodies the values you esteem. They will become a fellow traveler for your voice, helping you navigate through your thoughts and feelings. They need not solve your problems. Sometimes, simply listening suffices. Their presence serves as a reminder that you're not alone in this journey. As you share your thoughts, you may discover nuggets of wisdom in their responses, gems of truth that enable you to perceive things differently. Stoic philosophy teaches that life's challenges are best faced with a calm mind and a supportive community. The companion you choose is part of this community, a testament to the idea that strength often arises from solidarity. Step 4. Set boundaries for your emotions. Like a steadfast captain, we steer our ship through the storms of emotion. The crashing waves of the ocean are our powerful emotions, sometimes too intense to bear. 
Stoicism doesn't instruct us to avoid these waves, but rather teaches us how to navigate them with wisdom and resilience. We know when to let the waves carry us and when to firmly adjust our course. Our emotions are natural, yet without boundaries they can sweep us far from our chosen path. The secret lies in weathering these waves without capsizing our vessel. Epictetus, with his profound understanding of the human soul, reminds us that it's not events themselves that trouble us, but rather our perceptions of them. This insight is key to establishing emotional boundaries. It's akin to having a gatekeeper in our minds, one who acknowledges every emotion that visits but doesn't allow any one of them to take control of our inner peace. For example, when anger comes knocking, we recognize it, understand its origins, but don't let it dictate our actions. It's about engaging in dialogue with our emotions, understanding their place, and gently guiding them to where they don't overshadow our reason. In practical terms, setting boundaries could mean allocating a specific time to experience a certain emotion. For instance, for the next hour, I'll allow myself to feel sadness about this, and then I'll focus on finding solutions. It's not about denying emotions, but managing their impact. It's a delicate balance, like walking a tightrope, where we acknowledge the height, but concentrate on the rope. By doing so, we respect our emotions without becoming enslaved by them. We acknowledge, we understand, and then we gently guide ourselves back to a place of equilibrium and rationality. This process isn't about repression, it's about moderation, much like adding just the right amount of sugar to your tea. Enough to savor the flavor, but not so much that it overwhelms. Step 5. Contemplating Detachment When standing at the crossroads of detachment, take a moment to gaze down each path. Stoicism is not about hasty decisions. It is about meticulous contemplation. Envision each path as a potential future, each turn as a distinct outcome. What awaits at the end of the detachment road? Will there be peace, growth, and a firm self-awareness? Or merely traces of regret and missed opportunities? This foresight is not about unequivocally predicting the future. It is about preparing for it with wisdom. Marcus Aurelius, who bore the weight of an empire, once pondered, Look back at the past, with its shifting empires, rising and falling, and you can also glimpse the future. These words capture the Stoic practice of reflecting on the past to guide future decisions. Reflect on times when you have distanced yourself before. What were the results? Did the distance bring clarity and peace, or did it lead to isolation and regret? Utilize these reflections as a compass a means to learn from the past to navigate the future. Finally, consider the repercussions of your decision on others. Stoicism teaches us to weigh our individual needs against the common good. In detaching, are you fostering your own growth and positively contributing to the lives of others, or are you potentially causing harm or misunderstanding? This step is not solely about personal gain. It is about harmonizing your well-being with the interconnected web of relationships in which we all exist. It is akin to being mindful of your footsteps in a garden, ensuring they nurture growth rather than trample the flowers. Detachment, in the Stoic context, is an act of intelligence, a carefully considered decision that takes into account not only the self, but also the intricate network of relationships that we all inhabit. Step six, take a break from social networks. Imagine your soul as a serene lake, and now envision social media as incessant rain showers constantly disturbing the tranquil surface of that lake. These showers, unceasing and boundless, are the constant influx of messages, updates, and comparisons that encroach upon our infinite tranquility. Stoicism, an ancient philosophy predating the digital era, still offers timeless wisdom to manage such distractions. 
Seneca, reflecting on life's brevity, would likely regard social media as one of the unnecessary distractions of modern life. This step isn't merely about distancing oneself from a wave of digitalization. It's about granting space for our minds to breathe, to contemplate, to exist. It's akin to drawing the curtains to shut out the bustling streets beyond your window. The noise, the rush, the ceaseless movement remains. Yet for a moment, it ceases to be your concern. You find yourself in the tranquil confines of your own room, with the space to reflect, to comprehend, to evolve. Temporarily relinquishing social media isn't an act of escapism. It's a lesson in self-care. It's about discerning what enriches us and what diminishes us. As you take this respite, observe the shift in the landscape of your mind. This awareness lies at the heart of Stoicism, understanding what we can control and accepting what we cannot. Remember, while we cannot halt the rain, we can choose to seek shelter and savor the sound of raindrops without getting drenched. Stepping away from social media in today's world might feel like stepping off a fast-moving train. It's tranquil, serene, yet within that serenity lies clarity. As you embark on this journey of repose, recall the words of Seneca and utilize this time judiciously. Read a book, take a stroll, jot down thoughts in a journal, engage in activities that nourish your soul. This is your time to reconnect with yourself, to remember who you are amidst the quiet, far removed from the cacophony of the world. Step seven, focus autonomously on your fundamental needs. In this final phase on the path of detachment, redirect your attention to the core of yourself. Here lies the essence of Stoic philosophy concentrating on what truly matters for inner growth and mental tranquility. It entails not merely discarding the unnecessary, the noise, or the luxuries, but rather concentrating on nurturing the soul. This pertains not only to material needs, it delves much deeper. It concerns nurturing emotions, ethics, and personal development. Consider your life as a garden what does it require to become robust? Sunlight, water, care, these are indispensable. Similarly, identify what is necessary for emotional and spiritual development and concentrate on nurturing these aspects. Epictetus, born into extreme adversity, comprehended the significance of focusing on the truly important. His teachings accentuate the power of discrimination, separating the wheat from the chaff in our lives. Wealth does not lie in possessing vast riches, but rather in having few desires. Apply this understanding to your emotional realm. Know what you need to feel content, stable, and serene. Recognize that sometimes less is enough in a world of incessant choices and distractions. Find contentment in simplicity and profundity. Indeed, this demands that you spend time reflecting on what truly brings happiness and genuine peace. It could be solitary moments of tranquility, meaningful conversations with friends, or engaging in a hobby. Identify these core needs and prioritize them. This intentional focus aids in detaching from the unnecessary, from people and situations that do not align with your fundamental needs. By directing your life towards these needs, you establish a sturdy and joyful foundation. This is not merely a one-time task, but an ongoing process, a continual return to what truly matters. As you traverse through life, persist in revisiting your fundamental needs, adjusting and reassessing as you progress and evolve. This focus serves as your compass, guiding you through life's intricate twists and turns with clarity and purpose. It epitomizes a purposeful way of life, not mere existence. And within this mode of living, you discover the essence of Stoic philosophy, a life lived with purpose, understanding, and spiritual serenity. 
As we step onto the path of disengagement from the entanglements of human affairs and existence, we uncover a deep wellspring of inspiration and practical wisdom within Stoic philosophy. This philosophy instructs us not merely to withdraw temporarily, but also to contemplate the profound reasons behind detachment, to engage in candid self-dialogue, to establish boundaries for our emotions, to reflect on the consequences of our actions, and to attend to the fundamental needs of life. Stoicism, with its steadfast wisdom, teaches us that detachment does not equate to becoming emotionally aloof. Instead, it signifies the attainment of an inner state of peace and resilience. In traversing the labyrinth of human relationships and life's challenges, Stoicism shines as a guiding beacon, leading us towards a life enriched with virtue, wisdom, and emotional strength. We welcome your thoughts in the comments. Which step resonates with you, or which one are you inclined to try? If you've resonated with our conversation today, I invite you to show your appreciation by tapping the like button, joining our community by subscribing for more thought-provoking content, and engaging with us in the comments section to share your insights. Let's nurture this ongoing conversation together cultivating a community dedicated to self-reflection and personal growth. Thank you for being part of this journey toward deeper understanding and resilience. Until we meet again, stay present, stay resilient, and embrace the stoic mindset.